Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train here, and in today's festive tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a range of snowflake pattern designs using tools in Microsoft PowerPoint. It's quick, it's simple, and you can create a whole range of really interesting designs very easily. So let's get started. So at school the other day, one of the students asked me how to create a snowflake pattern in Microsoft PowerPoint. She was creating a winter scene in PowerPoint. And uh, I thought about it and showed her the way that I would approach doing that. And she absolutely loved the idea and started uh, spending ages working on it. And I thought it would be worthwhile sharing it here in a tutorial. I'm going to be using two main keyboard shortcuts and they make everything very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, you may well have come across these shortcuts before, but the two that I'm going to be using are Control G, which will group any shapes which are selected into a single group that can be copied and moved around. And the other uh, keyboard shortcut is Control D, which duplicates or copies whatever shape or shapes are currently selected. And it's using those two um, that allow us to do um, this amazing pattern. So let's have a little look at how to do this. We have a, a new blank slide here, first of all. And I'm going to be inserting a line. So I'm going to go to Insert Shapes and use the Straight Line tool. And I'm going to create a line starting around uh, the middle and going straight up. Now you see that I've drawn this line. It's come out white. How come it's come out white when normally it'll come out thin and pale blue? Because I've changed the default style of the line. Uh, when you draw a line to begin with, it will probably be blue and it will be very much thinner than the one that I've got there. Um, however, if you change the style of the line, so you change it to white and you change the thickness, um, then once you've done that, what you can do, let me just do that now, so I'll change it to white and we'll have it about that thick there. Uh, you can right click on the line and then choose set as default line. And now whenever you draw a line, the um, style will be the same. So that just helps a little bit. I'm going to zoom in slightly uh, on this line so that I can see it. And what I'm going to do now is simply draw some patterns, but only on the left hand side of this line. So let me just draw a line starting from the middle and just going out like that. Then click on the line and you see how having it as a default line makes it so much easier to be able to create uh, patterns like this. So I'm only going to be creating my lines on the left hand side of this. And what you do is entirely up to you. Let's just create a few random patterns like this. There we go. And then perhaps just one more like that. There we go. Now what I would do then is zoom in a little bit further because you can see one or two of these lines, they're slightly um, not quite joining. So I'm going to just click on that and grab that end, just move it up so it's lining up nicely. So move this line in here and then down here. This line just needs to be moved out slightly. There we go. So all those lines now are meeting uh, beautifully. So that's the first part and that's fairly straightforward to do. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to select by drawing a frame over all of this, all of those shapes. However, I don't want to select the vertical line. So I'm going to hold control down on my keyboard and just click the bottom of this vertical line. And if you look closely, you'll see that the circle at the top and bottom of that has gone because what I'm doing now is only selecting the left hand half of this. I'm not selecting the line in the middle. So having selected the left hand half of my pattern, it's time for the first of those keyboard shortcuts, Control G to group. So when I click Control G, you see now they've gone from being separate shapes to one single shape. It's still separate from the main line, uh, but it is now one single shape. So the next thing is to duplicate it or copy it. So that's control D. So I get a copy of that. And now I'm going to go to the shape format menu at the top and down to rotate and flip it horizontal. So it's a mirror image of the shape that I created. 
So with that mirror image, I'm going to move that over. And if you look closely, you'll see that red lines appear. You can see two there. And those red lines show me that this half is exactly vertically aligned with the left hand half. So I'm going to move that further in like that until I then get a red line going vertically down the middle. If you're looking on a mobile device, you may not see this as clearly. I'm holding it in place for the moment so that you hopefully can see that. So I'm looking for the, vert the horizontal red line that goes across the top, the horizontal red line at the bottom and a horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical red line going down the center point here. And when I do that, I know that this is exactly mirroring the left hand half. So there is the first uh, leaf or branch, if you like, of the snowflake. Next, I'm going to group that. So again, click and drag a frame over all of it and control G to group it. So I now have one object like that. Uh, now we need to duplicate it. So it's control D to duplicate it. There we are. So there's my copy. And again, I'm going to go to shape format and rotate. But this time I'm going to flip it vertically like that. And of course, this comes down here like that. Um, and you see again the red lines if I just move that in place. Hopefully you can see that the red lines are going vertically down the left and the right half of this. So that shows me that this is exactly vertically aligned with the one underneath. Just move that up slightly so that there's no gap in the middle. There we go, like that. And once again, I'm going to click a frame over all of this and control G to group it. So I now have one copy of this uh, mirrored, mirrored snowflake pattern. All right, then the next step is to um, click this to select the whole of this group and control D to duplicate it and then control D again to duplicate it a second time. So I now have three copies of this. Now I'm going to click on this right hand copy here and again, go to shape, format, rotate. And this time I'm going to click on the more rotation options. This opens up a panel on the right hand side and we can see a rotation option here. And I'm going to click in there and type 60 and press enter. So that rotates it 60 degrees. Next, I'm going to click on the one on the left hand side and click in the rotation angle and choose 300 and press enter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now what I'm going to do is uh, with the first one selected, I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I can select the middle one and the right hand one as well. I'm going to close this panel on the right because I don't need that now. So with all three selected, I'm going to click on the uh, shape format menu at the top and then choose align. And I'm going to choose align middle so that they're all vertically aligned and then align center so they're all aligned in the center. And what do you know? We have a snowflake. Now with the whole thing selected, I'm going to press control G to group it. And there we are. We have a snowflake. Now you'll notice that in the um, previous pictures, I had lots of little snowflakes in the background and that was created just simply using this effect. Um, and you can use this effect and you can uh, obviously resize this like this. Uh, what I actually did was I um, cut it. So right click, oops, right click on the edge and cut or control X. And then when I right click and paste, I get two paste options. The first one is to paste it exactly as it was copied. So shapes. The second one is to paste it as a picture. And if I do that, it's no longer a set of individual lines. It's now a single picture. Uh, in fact, if you can uh, right click on it and you can save that as a picture if you want to and put it in wherever you like. And you see the difference between the two. Uh, let me just uh, undo that again and just show you the difference here. If I take this and I, um, I'm going to copy it this time. So this is now the individual shapes. So I've undone back to where we've got individual lines. So with that group selected, I'm going to copy it, then right click and paste it as a picture and put this on the right hand side. So the one on the left is a group of individual shapes or lines and the one on the right I've pasted as a picture. 
Let me select both of them and change their size, make them much, much smaller. And you'll see that as I do, the one on the left, which has all the shapes, it's keeping the line thickness. So of course it looks quite chunky. And if I get really small, it, it starts to lose all detail completely. However, the one on the right, the picture scales perfectly. So as it gets smaller, the line thickness gets smaller. And so I can end up creating lots of those lovely small snowflakes that I did before. So I can make that smaller. Um, and then I can do a little shortcut here, hold the control key down and then just click and drag. And with the control key held down, I can click and drag and create loads of these little snowflakes. And then I can maybe make one a bit smaller and it still contains all that detail there. And then hold the control key down to create lots of little small snowflakes like this. Um, and there we are. And just using that simple method, you see I've created quite a range of different snowflakes here. The glow effect, by the way, um, that I did, um, that's just very simply um, using the shape effects tool there and going down to glow. And that can create a, a, sort of a, a cool uh, ice effect, perhaps that can look quite nice as well. Um, so there we are, that's it really. So it's using a combination of the line tool and using the default line, setting the default line, um, using the control G and the control D shortcuts, um, as well as being able to use rotation and then converting the shapes into a picture. So quite a lot of little tools in there, but overall I think it's quite straightforward and quite simple. And uh, the effect it looks really good. I mean, these uh, th this background here looks quite detailed, quite magical, and yet, you know, it didn't take more than a few minutes to do. And the beauty, of course, is it's a little bit like when you had uh, the paper and you'd fold it up and cut it out. You never really quite knew what you were going to get. And with doing a variety of different shapes, um, the end result looks very, very different. You never quite know what you're going to end up getting. A little bit like real snowflakes, everyone is different. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please take a moment to just give this video a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, do leave them below. If you manage to create a snowflake, it'd be fantastic to see your results and I can put those together perhaps and showcase those. So do send me them uh, if you manage to create a snowflake picture. Um, and uh, there we are then. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That really does help support the channel and means that you'll know when the next video comes out. I do publish videos now every Tuesday and Thursday at five o'clock UK time. That's 11 o'clock in the morning central time. So if you subscribe and look out for those videos at that time, that would be awesome. And finally, this whole presentation that you see here with all these snowflakes, all of this is available free to download if you head over to my Patreon page, which is simply patreon.com forward slash the tech train. So I hope to see you there as well. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <music>